Okay, well, we're going to continue on kind of where we left off in the last chapter. When we first started out, we learned how to record business transactions using our accounting equation. Remember, the accounting equation says that our assets equal our liabilities plus our owner's equity. And we're continuing. Um, when we were introduced to this in our first chapter, we recorded transactions using that. So if we had our cash account, our cash would go up by 100 and our owner's equity or capital account would go up by $100 as well. So we learned how to record transactions using the accounting equation in our first chapter. Our second chapter then said, well, let's not use the accounting equation anymore. Let's go ahead and use T accounts. And so what we were doing is we were drawing a T account under each of our asset accounts, for example, our cash account had a T account, and our supplies account had a T account, our accounts payable account had a T account. All of our equ owner equity accounts, including the owner's capital account, had a T account, our withdrawals account had a T account, etc. Well, we are going to continue to think of accounts just as we do here, but we're not going to record transactions originally into T accounts. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to record transactions in a journal. And let me tell you why, or let me show you why. Let's say that our supplies went up $100, and we're looking at this account and we're saying, oh, wow, well, supplies went up $100. Well, I can see that I debited supplies for 100, but what did I credit? I can't see what I credited. Well, we can make a kind of a random guess and we can say, well, we might have paid out cash. So we might have, the other account affected might have been the cash account. But I'm not really sure because another option would have been, can you figure it out? Uh, we might have purchased the supplies on account. So again, we're kind of guessing if we're only looking at the one account, we have to kind of guess what was the other account affected. So instead of recording transactions right away into T accounts or our general ledger accounts, what we're going to do is we're going to journalize the account. So we are going to start learning how to journalize. And we journalize in a general journal. So I'm going to show you pretty quickly how to journalize in our general journal. So I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to draw a journal page for you on the board and demonstrate to you how to record a, a transaction in our general journal. Well, our general journal always has a date column. It always has an accounts and explanation column. Hopefully I'm drawing this kind of straight. It has a debit column and it has a credit column. So this is our heading at the very top of each journal page and of course it'll have journal page one, journal page two, etc. And this is just like a journal. It's what we used like when we were in school and it recorded our daily activities. You know, I sat next to Joey Johnson on the bus and he's so cute. Or we had macaroni and cheese for lunch today and it was disgusting. You know, something like that. So we're just keeping um, a recorded in chronological order all of the transactions that happened in a business. And this is our general journal. This is going to be page one. So let's look at our first transaction. Let's say that the owner invested some money in the business. Well, the first thing we always want to do is we want to put down the date. So let's say it was January the 1st. And let's say that we need to look at the account that was debited first. If the owner invested money in the business, we know that cash is going up. And we know that the owner's capital is going up as well. So 
So we're going to put down January 1st. We want to put the debited account first. And the debited account is cash. So we're going to list cash out. We're going to put it flush against the state line. We're going to indent and put the amount. Let's say it was $1,000. So we're listing cash first because it's the debited account. We're going to go ahead and put the debit amount in the debit column. And then the other account that was affected was the owner's capital. And this one's also increased, and we increased the owner's capital with a credit. So we're going to indent about a quarter to a half an inch. So indenting means to move over. You don't need to actually draw the arrow, but we're indenting. And we're going to put down the owner's capital account. So whatever that owner's name is, we'll just call it owner. Writing out the full name of the account, try not to abbreviate because when you start abbreviating then when people want to go back and look at the journal, you might have abbreviated it so much they don't understand what the account was. So please don't abbreviate. And then we're going to put the dollar amount here. We can see both the debit and the credit, the two accounts affected, and then we show a little explanation. And I like to indent just a little bit. You can put them in parentheses if you want your explanation. Owner invests in business. Now for the explanation, you can definitely abbreviate. You always want to skip one single blank line, so you want to have a blank line before you start your next journal entry. So I'm going to erase this one. Let's do one more. Let's say that um, the business pays or purchase, purchases supplies on account. Well, I know that supplies is going up. And I know that my accounts payable is also going up. So I skipped a line. Okay, you don't have to write it in. I'm just showing you. Skip a line. And then we move to the next one. Let's say this happened on January the 2nd. So I'm going to put my date, which is January the 2nd. My supplies is going up. Supplies is an asset. To increase an asset, you debit it. So we always list debits first. So we're going to write down the supplies. And let's say that we bought $300 of supplies. So supplies is being debited. I list it first. I go ahead and put the dollar amount here under the debit column. Since accounts payable is the account that's being credited, I know to who, or to increase, I know to increase accounts payable, I need to credit the account. So I'm going to list that next. And I'm going to indent a little bit, and this is my accounts payable account. Now again, I try not to abbreviate because I don't want to make anybody else confused as to what account I'm using. So I'm crediting accounts payable for $300. i am going to go ahead and put a little explanation, purchase supplies. And I'm going to abbreviate in my explanation. And I could put down who I bought it from, maybe I bought it at... Uh, Walmart or whatever. So this is how you journalize and I hope that was explained pretty well. Good job!